the scheme of things. How are we all doing? Okay, so what is today all about? I'm going to start with that. Basically, it's about giving you guys a method, a technique, a structure so that you know how to best spend your time. There's A-levels are tough. They are long. There's lots of work. They are technically full-time courses. So you do what, 15-ish hours a week in school. You should also, in theory, be doing 15 hours a week outside of school to give it 30 to 40 hours a week total. They are supposed to be full-time courses, but there's no getting away from it. There's a lot to learn. They're difficult. They are advanced levels. And I'm here to basically make your A-level biology journal journey as simple as possible. So first of all, before we get stuck in too much, I'm going to ask, what is your what are your end of A-level goals? So that might be a specific course at a specific uni. It might be that your teacher told you you can't get this certain grade, so you just want to prove them wrong. Maybe your parents are going to buy you a car if you get certain grades. Like, what is it that you want to get out of it at the end of it? Yeah, someone knows in the coconut. This is my this is my drink for right now. Uh, it's pretty hot here. I'm in Bali right now, so cheers to the coconut. Well spotted. Dentistry, any particular grades? You want to make your parents proud? New medicine at Imperial, get into uni for medicine. So lots of medics, a bit of optometry in there. So, okay. Computer science, triple A from Poppy. Okay, so awesome. Um, well, that's basically what it's all about. Okay, so I've got some other questions for you. And I'm going to be showing you, anyone was in Rich's live class on, where was it, Thursday evening? Anyone seen that? Because there's going to be, we're going to, it's going to be the same method, but I'm going to give you lots of A-level biology twists to it, basically, how you can use it for A-level biology to structure your revision. Hey, Luke, I see you in there. Uh, okay, you want to get an A. Luke's super motivated. Um, I've had lots of chats with him. In fact, Luke, we haven't spoken very much. That's something we should, we should correct fairly soon. Um, I've been calling lots of students recently, getting their feedback on the courses and seeing what they want to um, seeing what you want to achieve at the end of it all. That's why I was kind of asking this. OK, so those of you that are here early, I tip my cap to you and I'm going to I need you. I'm going to recruit you just to help me out just for a little bit. I'm going to go through the questions that everyone's going to ask us as they join halfway through the session. And we're going to use the hive mind of you lot to answer the questions for us. So I'm just gonna share my iPad screen here. So bear with us. Okay, so these are the frequently asked questions I'm gonna tell you now. So the way any people are asking us, which exam board is it for? All exam boards. In fact, you can pretty much apply this to pretty much any subject and yeah, any exam board. So it's, it's a method, it's a technique, it's a structure. It's not pure content. Anyone can use it and apply this to more or less. I don't know how it works quite with languages, but with content driven subjects, it definitely works. How long is the live? It's gonna be about an hour, seven. I normally have a run a little bit. I'll take some questions at the end. So we'll finish just after seven o'clock, something like that. How do I get the course free? I'm gonna give it to everyone for free. You don't have to do anything for it apart from we'll give you the link at the end. So hang around to the end. When they're asking how to do it, the link will be at the end, hang around. Um, is there a year 13 version of this course? Simply, this is a method. It's, you, you can make, you can do this for GCSE, you can do it for chemistry, you can do it for A-level, you can do it for AS. So you can take this method and bend it to whatever you want it to do. So no, there's not, but we are, I'm obviously not going to exclude the year 12s. I've based all the materials here around the AS content, so it's accessible to everyone. I've again selected all the questions in the question pack to be accessible to all exam boards. So that goes back to the first question. There is a, uh, a biology paper in this. It's gonna take you about an hour, that paper. I've specially made it just for you guys. It's all gonna be included and free and all the links are coming up at the end. Do you need a paid T, T subscription? No, you don't. This is free for everyone. Can you share it with your course mates? It's free for everyone. <laughs> um, and what if you haven't finished all the AS topics yet, which is a great question that someone asked the other day. If you haven't finished all the AS topics yet, then there's two basic options. You can skim through a paper and cross out the topics, the questions. If you get a question or a topic, it's just not, you haven't done it yet, cross it out and just don't do that on when you get the paper. Or you can find a revision site or you can find a question pack your teacher's given you for, on topics that you have done and just apply this to any of the question sets that you're doing. Okay, I'm gonna pull off my screen sharing. Everyone got that? You guys are super on it. You're here early. I'm imagining most of that will have sunk in already. Okay, so um, what's next? What's next? I'm gonna ask you, what are your biggest stumbling blocks, problems, obstacles standing between you and getting your grade that you want? What, is, what are the main challenges 
in A-level biology. Now, these might be general study challenges, it might be organization motivation, it may also be biology specific things. And I'm not gonna give you too much info here, but I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna see what you give me. So yeah, I also, it, as much engagement in the chat today as you can. I really wanna see as much in there as possible. Um, and yeah. I really hope, well, in fact, I know that this is gonna, we've seen the results of this from last year already. Um, anyone use the TT method in their revision prep for their AS exams last year? Then let us know in the chat how you found it. It seems a little bit counterintuitive. In fact, this is so good, we actually trademark this because we basically, this is ours. We've proved it's so, so effective that this, we've like, we've never seen anything like it before. Between us, we've got, I don't know, 50 years plus of experience and we, been working on this for just over a year now and we this is the launch this is the grand opening so um yeah okay so aqa's wording so is that wording of the question hi Haspa. i was talking to her in the week um questions biodiversity so specific topics wording of the question stupid mistakes in the exam not reading questions missing out questions making mistakes application exam technique procrastination, drive, motivation. Okay, so procrastination, drive, motivation, all of these are linked to having a clear goal. If you set yourself a clear goal, maybe make it a bit of a challenge, but if you know what you're working towards, it's so much easier than just like, oh, it doesn't really matter what I get, I'm just drifting, I'm finding it quite hard. Like if you have, I want to get a B and get into this specific course at university, it gives you way more motivation than just yeah, than just drifting. So like having a clear clear target for that is super useful. Understanding the questions and applying it. Okay, so we're gonna be lots of work on that. Um, just a quick yes or no. Who's one of my subscribers in my course? Yes or no, doesn't matter if you are, doesn't matter if you aren't, but it will give me an idea of where to like, how much time I spend explaining the basics of stuff that we're doing. Got a lot of yeses. I like that. Oh, look at this. This is perfect. Okay, so I'm going to... Not a single no yet. New-ish. Welcome, Kitty. Have you been to any of my live classes yet? Because a lot of these skills I'm going to be drilling into you, testing you, preparing you. Exam technique. How much of the content is AO1? How much of the exams are AO1? There's another little question for you before I get too stuck into the method. I ask this to students all the time and I get a weird... AO1 is factual recall. How much of it is like, tell me this fact. How much of the exam? Okay, in fact, whilst I've got all you subscribers together, there'll be a lot of non-subscribers watching this. Score out of 10 for effectiveness, TT courses or biology if you want. Score out of 10. I want 10 being the most effective, one being the least effective. In terms of just pure effectiveness, I'm going to ask you another question on another scale in just a minute. I'd be very interested to see. Very nice. Okay, and I've got one more question. A lot of students say that they think it's expensive and I can totally understand that, but I spend so much of my time, there's so many teacher hours goes to answer your questions every single day. Now give me a score, value for money. It seems expensive, but now that you've used it and you've seen what it is and what it does and how much, how many questions you get answered if you get stuck on homework, as what's about a score for value for money? 11 out of 10. That is, I wasn't, I was expecting, I didn't know where you're going to go with this one. So it was just interesting for me to see. I promise we're going to, thank you, Nikita. That's very nice. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, we work incredibly hard for you guys. And I'm sure if you put your effort in, we give it as much of it back as we can. So, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go in, I'm going to show you the overall of what we've put together. This is a free course and I'll give you the link to it at the end, as I told you in the beginning, but um, I'm gonna share my screen and sort of delve into, um, yeah, delve into the course. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong window, so that's not going to help over here. Let's share this one. So when you, when you get in the course, this is the brand new shiny course. As soon as I finish this, I'm gonna add this to all of your accounts. So TT subscribers, if you've already got a subscription with us, I'm going to add it to your bundle, but it's not done yet because this is the launch. This is the first time anyone's ever seen it. You'll have seen the chemistry one, but this is the biology one. So in my opinion, it's way better. 
Anyway, okay, so this is the TT method. And I'm gonna go through this graphic in a little bit. This is the structure. This is kind of what you should be doing with all your exam papers between now and the exams if you're doing past papers. Um, and you're gonna get the paper, the, uh, the documents that go with it are all available on the TT method documents section over here. And you're gonna get all the information. I'm gonna give you this verbally, but it's all there for you to read if you want. And if you wanna ask questions, if you're not one of our subscribers and you wanna ask me questions in the chat down here, you can ask me a question on any of these lessons, just like you can with all our other courses, then you can just enroll in the course. It takes you there, you just enroll, it's free um, for you to go there. Um, okay, this TT method, in fact, I think it's probably easy if I show you this on my iPad because I can zoom in a bit. Some of you may be watching on a phone and as a result, it's gonna be pretty difficult to read. So uh, let me switch over to that and I can also do some scribbles on there. What is your current sort of revision method? What do you guys have for revision method right now? I wanna see that in the chat. Like, do you have a strategy? Do you do past papers? I'm sure some of you do past papers. But then what do you do? Okay, I'm gonna, one question at a time. Bit of active recall, exam questions, TT videos. Just watch a video. Yeah, I know which ones you're referring to, Kitty, yeah. Reading the book, revised content, notes and flashcards. Okay, once you've done an exam, once you've done a paper, let's say you have done a past paper, which I'm, how many past papers have you guys done right now? How many past papers have you done up to this point? I mean, obviously just approximately, like none, one to three, you're done, five or six, couple. Yeah, and, and no shame here, like that's the way of the world. I totally get it. I, I was not a model student. Now that I've spent the last sort of 10 years of my life modeling education and improving it, I've been teaching for 15 years or so, but um, okay, so fair amount. What do you do after the exam? Next question, what, what do you do once you finish the exam? What's the next step? Cry. <laughs> Mark it, relax. What's after the marking? Examine where you went wrong. Sully, I like it. Worry, negative marking, just learned it yesterday. Wait for the result. Okay, sweet. So this is students where students often go wrong. They do an exam and then you test yourself and then you mark it and you say, oh, I got this mark. And then do another exam and you mark it and you get this result. And you do another exam and you mark it and you, you, you still, you're getting the same grade basically each time because the process of doing the, a different exam each time doesn't necessarily teach you all that much. You learn a little bit, but you don't learn a huge amount. So with this, we're gonna start in here, exam number one. We start here in the corner and then you do the exam. So that's gonna, we've put together an exam paper for you. It's about an hour. So this is gonna be an hour's worth of work. It's 43 marks, my paper, you get about 1.2 minutes per mark. And so it's gonna be about an hour. You do the exam, it's gonna take you an hour. You're then gonna mark it and analyze it. And we've produced a document to help you analyze it so you can pinpoint where you're going wrong. But when you're marking it, you do, as Hasper just said, you're gonna negatively mark it. I'm gonna go into all of these steps in a little bit more detail, but you're gonna negatively mark it. And what do I mean by that? You're gonna start with the mindset you have 100% when you start the exam. You have full marks. Every time you lose a mark, you go minus one. So, so if you get three out of five, that's actually minus two, not plus three. So you're training yourself to like isolate where do you, uh, where do you go wrong? Who used who's used any of the um, the stuff the the handouts from chemistry that we did on Thursday? Give me some feedback about how you've found the stuff that you've done so far, just to give others who are looking at us thinking this is a bit crazy, this is a bit counterintuitive. Let us know what you've thought about the stuff that you've already seen. So you're going to mark it and figure out where your weaknesses are. That's what the green box is all about right here. This is, so it's not just marking it, marking and analyzing it using the mark side drop sheet. We've, we're gonna give it to you. Then you're gonna find your three biggest things. What three things, if only three, which three things cost you the most marks? And I'm gonna come back and help you with all of this and I'm gonna go into more detail, but which three things cost you the most marks? And then you're gonna do an action hour, a specific action hour on each of those three things to target them, to improve them. And all of this probably doesn't seem that crazy to you. But the next step is the one where students go, what, are you sure? I don't think that's a good idea. Now you are going to repeat the same exam. You are gonna basically, you're gonna repeat the same exam. You're gonna be a bit quicker this time because you've just done it at least 24 hours later. People were asking yesterday, how long should I leave it? Minimum 24 hours between this exam and this exam. 
If it's more than 24 hours, that's totally fine. Obviously, the longer you leave it, the more you're gonna forget. Yes, you will remember some of the answers, but that's the point. When you know you're going to do exam, the same exam, the exactly the same exam 24 hours later, when you're marking it, what are you gonna do differently? And that's a question, uh, it's not a rhetorical question. How, if you know you've got to do the same exam 24 hours later, how, how, what's your mindset going to be like when you're, when you're marking it? And that, this is where I think this is really important because most students, when they're marking it, they're marking to see how many marks they got right. And your focus is not on. Wording, not to repeat the same mistakes, revise the weaker topics. You're going to be like, I met, why did I write that? Like, how can I tweak my wording to get it right next time? I need, like, and I'm going to break down the categories, but you are going to be paying extra attention. And I'm going to tell you why you're paying extra attention, because you're going to end up in an infinite loop if you don't. OK, so the next step. So you're going to mark it and analyze it again. You've done the exam the second time and you've marked it and analyzed it a second time. So you've done the exam twice at this point. Now you've got a decision. Have you hit your target? And I'll tell you what your target's going to be in a minute. Or did you not hit your target? If you didn't hit your target, you're gonna, you do your mark, the mark side drop sheet, you analyze it, and you go back and you do three more action items, a maximum of three. Students will get stuck in the content learning revision phase. You're just going to get, I just got to learn more content. I'm not ready to do the exam yet. I haven't, I haven't quite, I am not going to get my target grade. So I don't want to do the exam before I'm definitely ready to do it. Nonsense. Test yourself, push yourself, start now, get things wrong. That's totally okay. You learn way faster when you're pushing yourself when your zone of proximal development is what it's called. You are on the edge, a little bit out of your comfort zone, but you're going to find that you're going to be picking these things up way quicker by doing this method than by just going through the textbook and writing notes because your content knowledge on transcription isn't quite good enough. I promise you. And then you're going to repeat it. And if you don't get the grade the second time around, you still haven't hit your target. You're going to do three more action hours and you're going to do the exam again. And you're going to think that this is crazy, but that's why you're going to be paying super duper extra special focus when you're marking it because you want to remember the mark scheme. You are fully motivated to learn that mark scheme so that you hit your target and then you can move on to a new paper. So basically what happens next, if you do hit your target grade, then you move on and you do a second exam. So that's exam number two. And then you do it, closed book, time conditions. I'm gonna go into the details of each of these in a minute. You then mark it and analyze it with the mark side drop sheet. You do your three action hours, maximum of three. You don't spend 10, 15 hours in the, in the learning phase because that's not the most efficient use of your time. And then you're gonna do exam number two. Oh. Remember, this is a revision method. If you haven't learned it yet, this is not for that. This is for revision, revision, revisiting stuff that you have already done. If you haven't got the knowledge, then you can cross those questions out and skip them and you can use other methods for doing that. Okay, so then you do repeat and repeat and repeat and just notice what what students will normally do and i'm just going to sketch this out really roughly here is that they'll do the exam here they'll then mark it but they won't analyze it too much so i only put that box in half and then they'll do another exam and they'll mark it and analyze it and they'll be getting better marks but they'll do another exam and then they'll mark it but they won't analyze it and then they'll do another exam and then they'll analyze it but so they will improve but this is what you're looking at because the improvement comes here and like because it's focused on the things that you need it to be focused on this tells you where you are weak i don't really care what you're good at i mean it's great that you are good at a lot of these things what i really care about as someone who's motivated by making you learn as fast as possible is where are you not very good and how can I make that better? I'm going to get way more marks out of you improvement if I target your weak areas than the things you're already good at. Students, myself included, are very guilty of revising the things that I know because it makes me feel good. It gives me confidence. And there is a lot to be said about confidence, but challenging yourself and stretching yourself is the fastest way of doing it. Okay, so what's next on my list, list here? What causes you, I've got this written down, but I don't think it needs to be, what causes you to drop marks in biology? Open question, no right and wrong answer. I will see what you give me. What causes you to drop marks?
your con teachers always do content, 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 and never do exam questions. You, I go into schools all the time. They sort of parachute me into either do exam technique and I'm shocked how little exam. AO1, to answer the question from earlier, 30%. So 70%-ish, maybe 65, is application and exam technique. So why spend two years studying content when that covers 30%? You've got to finish your content. This is news for you and a bit of a bombshell. Finish your content by the end of February. And if your teacher's not going to do that for you, ask them, find out when they're planning to finish teaching you content. If that's May half term, forget it. Forget it. Teach yourself. It's your exam. You're going to be doing this. They're not going to do the exam at the end of the day. So you're doing the exam. Finish your content by March. Give yourself at least, at least April and May, but ideally March, April, May for, revit, for exam technique and putting it all together, all the linking and the deep knowledge that needs to come. And that you can't do until you finish the content, which should happen. And if needs be, get ahead. And that sucks, but that's the way it's got to be. Okay, so not, as, not understanding what the question wants, Snooker. I was missing the chat. Not understanding what the question wants. Practicing how to apply methods. Well, Rama, then you need to get ahead of your class, of your school. Um, it's not going to be the most fun journey. You can use our courses to do that if you want. You can use whatever resources you want to do that. But you, finishing in May is bad, bad news. Recipe for not your optimum grade. So if you want to get your optimum grade, then you've only really got one choice. Um, maths in biology, so specific skills. So I've got skills. I'm just trying to pick up the graph here. Um, we had understanding the question from you guys. Um, waffling too much. So using the right words. Can I, that's what I call it on my sheet that's coming up in a minute. Okay. And my next question to you, what's the point of mock exams, of practice exams? Why do them? What's the point of ever, ever testing yourself? So I'm fascinated to know what you're going to give me on this one. See where you need to improve, great answer. What you know and what you don't know, most importantly, the don't know. See where you're at, it's the classic one. Where am I at? Useful, but not the most useful. Identify your weaknesses. Uh, you guys are learning very quickly. If I'd have asked you this two weeks ago, I'm sure you would have said some different answers. See your grade is the classic one. Okay, so exams, one thing you haven't really said, and don't think anyone said, and this is, a, this is I don't think it's a phenomenon, it's not that counterintuitive. It's called the testing effect. Osmosis is a, a, a a YouTube channel out there for nurses and paramedics and doctors to go through nursing school. It's a great channel. Um, some of you going into medicine will find that really, really useful going on. But Osmosis have a great video on the testing effect. I'm sure we can probably find a link for it somewhere. Um, testing is active recall. It is once you've studied it, you obviously can't start the learning process with a test because you haven't learned it yet. But testing is one of the most effective ways of actually learning content because you're trying to pull information out of your head. There's two phases, the learning phase, putting information in your head, that's our content guide. And then there's the retrieval phase, retrieval practice, the testing effect, which is basically what can I remember and what can't. And if you can, you're literally building synaptic connections in your brain. And doing that, when is that that is that awkward, like, oh, I can't, I kind of remember it. Oh, it's in the top right-hand side. It's in red pen because Rich puts all his key terms in red pen. And he, oh, that active recall, that difficult bit, just like in a gym when you're doing that, when your muscles are burning, that is the bit where learning is taking place. It doesn't feel nice. It's not pretty and it's not fun. But that is where you are in your maximal state of learning. So testing and testing, especially when it's just a little bit outside of your comfort zone, is where you really want to be in terms of time efficiency. Maximum maximum output for minimum time input. Not in terms of effort. It's going to be more effort, but less time. That's the deal that I generally give you. Okay, so I'll skip that one over. Let me go back into the course and show you a bit more about it. How am I doing for time? Oh, my days. It is half past already. Oh, I did start four minutes late, though, didn't I? So. I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra time. Okay, so back inside the course. Oh, that's myself on YouTube. Um, 
Okay, so this is the document is there. Have a look at it. Repeat the paper. Repeat the paper. Repeat the paper. Repeat the same paper until you hit your target grade. So what is your target grade? Your target grade is one grade above for this method is one grade above that you want to get at the end of the year. So if you if you're targeting a B, B is your target grade, then your threshold for moving on to the next paper is actually an A. So if your end goal is a B, because you'll have just done the exam the second time around, you'll have done it 24 hours earlier. Of course, you're going to remember the mark scheme a little bit. Of course you are. Of course, you'll have just done three things on your weakest possible topics in order to improve them. Of course, your grade's going to go up. So your target grade before you move on to the next paper is one grade above what you want at the end of the day. And if, you're, if you want an A star, then aim for 10% a stretch seven to ten percent over the threshold for an a star and i'll show you what that is in a minute okay so um what's next going moving on down you're going to get the exam paper so this is the exam paper here you've got um six questions they're on topics that should have been covered by as students already i say should teachers can teach the course in whichever order they like um, to be honest, if you're doing the A level, you could start at the back and move to the front if you wanted to. There's nothing stopping you doing that as a teacher. I, there's no way I can know what you've studied in school, but these are topics that probably you've come across already. If there is a topic on here that you just simply have not done, put a line through it, deduct the marks from the total, and then you can still work out your percentage. So you've got your exam paper uh, pretty straightforward over there. You no, don't need too much information on that. Okay, the marks I dropped sheet. This is where the analysis, remember, this is the, the green, the analysis, marking it and figuring out where you went wrong. So I wonder if I can zoom into this a little bit. I think I will. Okay, so you are going to write the paper name in here. In fact, it's probably better. Uh, probably better if I just share it. I have a version of this on my iPad as well. I'm a, I can zoom in. I, I'm aware I was catching up with a bit of Rich's live class from the other day and I, I was watching it on my phone and it was pretty difficult to read. So uh, I think I'll do this so that um, you guys can see it a bit more clearly. Okay, so in this, this is the sheet we're going to give you in the course. You're going to write, this is AS, paper two, 2017. I've done number one, first attempt in red. And every single mark you drop, remember, we're going to be marking this negatively. Every mark you drop goes in the tally. And these one of these four categories. So we've got E, L, C, and S. So let's start with those, actually. And these are the things you've told me pretty much already are the categories. So every drop mark you drop, you've got to put it in one of these categories. Is it E, didn't understand what the question was asking? You didn't understand what the question was asking. But when you look at the mark scheme, you know those points. You don't have to go away and learn that topic. You know those marking points. That's in your head. You just didn't know to write those ones down. Let me know if that's a problem that you struggle with, if you think that's a, a problem that's, that's a big one for you. Just a yes will do. OK. So oh, I'm already off the sheet. OK, so that's E didn't understand the question, exam guide needed. That's where our exam guide, the question analysis video is gonna be super duper useful there. Most of you are in our in our course already. So the exam guide is, is a good source of way of improving that. That's why I chose the letter E. I had to give some categories to it. L is the next one. I knew the answer, but I didn't use the right words on the exam. So you've written maybe what seems like quite a nice answer. You've basically danced around all of the marks. You might've got two out of four when you knew it, it wasn't for lack of knowledge, but it just wasn't, it just wasn't, wasn't there. My live classes, who comes to my live classes here? I see a few familiar faces, Luke's in here. This is something I do a lot of work on in the live classes. Um, so live class is needed. That's our suggestion there. Hi, Nikita. Yeah. Um, have you found that I've improved any of these things with the live classes? Let me know. Next category, C. I didn't know the content. Just fair up. Didn't know it. Not that weak topic for me. I missed those lessons, whatever. I didn't know or I've forgotten it. it was years ago. Can't remember it. Then didn't know the content guide is your friend. Teach you the content as fast as it possibly can. And then the last one is S, skills. Math skills, a lot of you said math skills, the practical skills, maybe it's data analysis, maybe it's a command word, it's just those suggest questions just keep tripping you up. Maybe that's what's going on. Okay, so that 
is the category. So every single mark, you choose a category, you mark it down for everyone, you drop pretty straightforward, I'm sure you can do a tally. Then you can write notes on it at the end of the exam, which bits, I didn't have much time doing this, so I kind of ran out of time a little bit. So you fill this in and definitely do more detail than I've done here. Give me some feedback on these sheets. If you want more space in those notes columns, we can tweak the documents so you have more space because we always respond to our students' needs because we are in good contact with them. And then once, okay, so which of these topics should I be focusing my work on? We've got E, L, C, and S. Okay, so you, you say, Ruhab, you say I'm pretty much all the ECLS. That's totally fine. But when you do this tally, that's your perception right now. That's your judgment. I'm weak at all of these things. But you will start to see, oh, actually, okay, I might lose loads of marks. That's okay now because we've got time to improve it but you're going to start seeing actually quantitatively where am i weakest okay so e is where i'm going to be doing most work and probably a bit of c as well and you can shuffle these up so i'm then going to do three action hours remember you're in that ladder of improvement three action hours only so it forces you to choose your weakest topics and not get stuck in in revision land making notes out in the textbook for six hours a day, all day, every day, which isn't actually doing that much good. So for me, I said for these particular things, so to improve my exam technique, analyze and rephrase five questions, answer them, and then check the mark scheme. So what do I mean by this? I mean, reading the question, shutting the book, rewriting that question in your own words, keeping the command word the same always, and then answering, leave it taking a break. So you rephrase, you rephrase the five questions. Then you come back to it after you've like forgotten the original a little bit. You then answer the rephrased one, the question you've written to yourself. And then you mark that. And do you, do your, does your rephrased version of the question, did your paraphrasing, twisting and contorting it in your brain, did you still get a similar answer? Or did you get, were you way off? Did you totally misunderstand the question? And then you can obviously look at joining the dots. Why did I choose to rephrase the question in this way? Why did that, why was that working well for me? Why that doesn't, um, why it didn't work for me? So that's one action hour right there. Second action hour, complete the template notes on three red content guides. So I'm gonna be showing you the, um, what I mean by a red content guide video. So doing some topic based work because you're just weak in those skills. So obviously over here, I had sampling, had mass transport implants, I had aseptic technique, and I had transcription. So I'd pick my three of those, my three red tagged with the traffic light system. And then my other third one here was do the first half of a paper using the five word challenge and carbs. Carbs is my question analysis um, mechanism that I go with, I use in my live classes. So it stands for command word and marks, the actual topic of the question, Re, uh, revisiting or reviewing key terms, bullet pointing your answers, and then self-check. Um, okay, so that's the marks I drop sheet. Then it's the wrong page. You've got a mark at this point, right? So you've just done your exam. It's AS paper two, 2017, and the first one I've done in red. So the first exposure to this exam. So this student wants to get, at the end of it, wants to get a B. So their target grade is one grade above their B. And these are the approximate, very approximate, because I've averaged it across exam boards, across the ASNA level. There's not a huge amount of variation across all the papers. This is approximate grade boundaries for, for the grades. So 22% and above is an E, 33% and above is a D, 40% and above is a C. Look how tight this is, six marks or 6% between a C and a B. Most students are average. It's a bell-shaped curve. This is the narrowest window, narrowest window. But the good news is, with a bit of help from yours truly, it's also the easiest one to get out of because it's the smallest band. 46% um, and above is a B, 55% and above is an A, and 64% and above has been an A star. So if this person wants to get a B, then 55% is our A threshold. So that's the mark they need to get. The first time they do it, this person, or me, if I'm pretending to be the student, got this mark. The second time they then do their 
their mark analysis, the marks I drop sheet. They do their three action hours. They redo the paper and they analyze it. And this time they get 52-ish percent. They haven't hit their threshold yet. So what do they do? They go back and they do three more action hours and then they redo the paper, the same paper still. You're still doing AS paper two, 2017. Third attempt, we get there. Then you can move on to the next paper. And you towards the end, you wanna be alternating between paper one to paper twos at this stage. Don't stress about that too much. This time, first attempt in red, doesn't get the target, but we've improved from the baseline that we were on before. And the second time it improves and we hit the th threshold. Now notice here, sometimes, sometimes it's gonna go fairly flat. That's, that's okay, but the general trend is gonna be your first attempt, i.e. what you're gonna get in the real exam, closed book time conditions is gonna go up. And this is the fastest way of doing it. Okay. Let me, I'm gonna go back to the exam guide. I'm so jazzed up. Um, let me show you around the course. I think that's probably the easiest thing for me to do. Okay, so this is the method. Step one, do the paper. Now, what do I mean by do the paper? This is, I'm gonna to come to the optional preparation work in a minute. This is exam conditions. Exam conditions, test conditions. So we've given you a little tick list here. You want to recreate the exam the best you possibly can. Tidy desk, printed copy of the formula book or any additional bits and pieces that you might need. Your calculator, you want a timer for however long you should be taking on this paper. No music, you want all your peripherals away. You shouldn't be using your phone as a calculator. Use your scientific calculator or calculator. No mark scheme, no looking things up, no finishing early. It's an exam and you can practice your self-check as well. So that's what I mean. Basically, every single question you do between now and the exam, you should do closed book, exam conditions. It's better to do that and not do very well than it is to look at the mark scheme in advance because that's not doing any of that active recall, which is the effective bit in terms of the learning. Okay, so how to revise um, biology. This is the paper. You can go through the paper. As I said, at the end of the paper here, what I've done, if I scroll the way to the bottom, you can download this. You don't have to work from the document itself. You can put your total marks is 43. Your mark goes in here. You can work that out as a percentage. Every A-level body student should be able to calculate a percentage by now. You've also got the mark schemes. Now, I'm not giving you the paper mark schemes. The mark schemes I'm giving you are all videos from my exam guide, and I'll show you where to find them in a minute. Um, okay, so... Do the exam test conditions, pretty straightforward. Marking analysis, I've gone into this a little bit already. We've gone through the, the marks I dropped sheet. These are the links to all the, the, uh, the exam guide tutorials, which are all loaded in here. So you'll see this is question one. I've done all these questions. I've done all the new spec questions and I've filmed three videos per question. I've done, analyzed the question in one video, giving you some hints, but not the answer. I've then answered it myself in exam conditions. And then I've marked my answer because I don't get them all right. I get about 85% when I do the exams. Um, so I, I drop 15% of the marks and I've been doing this a long time. Um, so don't feel beat yourself up. It's not like maths where 80, 90% is achievable. Well, it's achievable, but it's just damn hard dark. Marking, negative marking. You've got to do, this is really important. You start with 100% full marks. Every time you drop a mark, it goes down. It goes on your uh, marks I dropped sheet. So you just build the tally in one of those four categories. That's where the marking negatively comes in. Then analyzing your work, you wanna be spending some time figuring out every single mark that you dropped, why? What was the reason? Didn't know it, didn't understand the question, didn't use the right words, or didn't was lacking skills. It goes in one of those boxes. And then you're gonna do your action hours. Now, an action hour is something that we've been using with TT in terms of it's 45 minutes of full focus study. It's gotta have a specific task that you've gotta do and it's got to involve some active recall in an ideal world. The yeah, Mark's Eye drop sheet is here. And there's a full session on action hours here. So you're going to pick the things that you need to work on the most. And three is a maximum. So you're not spending forever in 
boring revision land, just copying notes out your textbook. So we've got lots of ideas and stuff like that in here, but the action hour cards, in fact, it's probably best again if I show you my iPad because I can fill one in as a demo. And we're going to do some biology stuff as to some suggestions of how you can actually improve this. So what would be some suggestions of action hours you could do if your content knowledge is weak? That's the easiest one to do. If you've got weak content, what, what would be a good suggestion for a 45 minute activity to do to improve your content knowledge? I'm going to come back and talk to you for a bit. You do three separate action hours. So you're choosing, after you've done your analysis, you'll found your weakest topics or your weakest skills. So you're then going to design three revision sessions for yourself to go and to target to improve those things. Watch the TTV on it. Yeah, I'd say do the template notes as well. Definitely. Any other suggestions for how you revise some content? I'd say content's the easiest one here. So you want to not Tricky, huh? You want a specific, the thing with action hours, you've got to write down, a, you can't just write revise carbohydrates. It's not specific enough. So you could say, watch three tutorials on carbohydrates and complete the template notes and update the traffic light system. That would be specific enough. Create flashcards on the key terms of topic X. Great idea. Read, cover, write, check on specific set of topics, active recall, good, good suggestion. Content guide videos, flashcards. Okay, what did I write down here? Um, some of those are on here as well. You could use your flashcards. You can create flashcards would be one. You could use your flashcards and test yourself using a progressive learning system, a lightness system where uh, I, there's not time to go into all of that kind of stuff right now. Um, what about recall flow diagrams? So in, in my course, I've put together for things like the respiration, the photosynthesis, maybe the nitrogen cycle. There's lots of like the detail orientated sections. I produce flow diagrams for my students to just print out and, and fill in all the details. Eventually, you want to take the training wheels off and not use the flow diagram. Just do it with a blank piece of paper. But to start with doing all those mind maps. But again, mind maps on what like. Yeah could be really effective. There's good ways and bad ways of using all these things, but um, you would want a way to make sure they're complete because just writing down what you know isn't necessarily going to build in more information of what you got. You need a maybe a, if you created a, a template mind map using a resource textbook course, something like that, and then you, you deleted all the bits and you flipped it upside down, then you were like, tried to recreate that and you're trying to recall what was on your perfect version of the mind map, good activity. Uh, what else I've got here? Topic-based question pack. Maybe it's just I'm weak on this topic and then doing using the testing effect in active recall on a question pack. Um, maybe using the exam guide. There are thousands of questions. All the new spec questions I've done in the exam guide. So you could pick uh, topic-based questions in the exam guide and all of that. Um, summarize and condense uh, a topic. So try and summarize all of the carbohydrates on a single page of A4, all the key terms, everything like that. Um, the flow chart of the nitrogen cycle is brilliant. Thank you very much. The template notes as well is going to be a good one there. Okay, if you didn't understand the question, what can you do if you didn't understand the question? Any suggestions for activities? Uh, oh, I think it's just started hammering down with rain outside here. It's supposed to be the wet season here right now. It hasn't rained since I've been here. Okay, so you try it again. Yeah, maybe a bit more focused than just try the question again. Because remember, the TT method, you are going to try the question again. This is preparation to help you do that. So maybe similar questions rather than the same questions. You could use the exam guide to find a bunch of other similar questions. Um, okay, so th this one is that you've not understood the question very well. So one of the things I do with my students is a thing called rephrasing the question. You 
you read the question, internalize it, you write it in your own words, keeping the command word the same, and then you answer that, see how you're doing. What's the, you could do some work going through the paper, what's the actual topic of the question? Again, this is in carbs, the A of carbs is the actual topic of the question. Go reading the question, what's the actual topic? That I saw one the other day, classic, it's about lipids, phospholipid bilayers, cholesterol, making lipid membranes more rigid. That's what cholesterol does, makes the strengthens the lipid membrane, makes it less flexible. And the first question was the percentage of cholesterol in red blood cells in the phospholipid membrane of the red blood cells is greater than that of an ileum cell, suggest the reason why. Okay, so that is to do with the red blood cell. It's not nothing really to do with triglycerides or cholesterol or membranes. It's got everything to do with the fact that a red blood cell is a, a is on its own. It's a single cell floating around. It's not supported by anything else. An ileum cell, it's got its villi poking out the top, but it's surrounded on all sides and underneath by other cells. So it doesn't need as much structural integrity. So it's a, just a conceptual question of like, what is a red blood cell and how's a red blood cell different from an ileum cell? It's nothing to do with membranes. And the next question was, E. coli doesn't have any cholesterol in its cell membrane. Suggest how it's managed, it ables to maintain its shape. Any suggestions on that one? If cholesterol is really important to giving membrane stability, how might a E. coli survive without having any of it? Radio silence, Shh, tumbleweed. I don't want to dwell on this too much, but what basically, this is a prokaryotes question, structure of prokaryotes. How is a prokaryote different to a red blood cell? What, what feature of a prokaryote, what features do they have that red blood cells don't have? Nucleus, but we're talking about having structural integrity. Cell wall. You could say peptidoglycan or murine, you can use either of those terms, but E. coli is a prokaryote or a bacterium, has a cell wall, eukaryotic cells. So that's a, it's a structure of prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. It's nothing to do with triglycerides. So when you're doing the actual topic of the question, I would write prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. That's the topic of that question. That takes skill and practice, but that's what you can do. You can do an entire paper, not answering the questions, just putting the actual topic of the question that's why i don't write the topic of the question because students the actual topic is the thing that you're interested in classic edxl specimen paper one question one photosynthesis graph photosynthesis this photosynthesis that first question rate of photosynthesis increases with temperature explain why everyone starts writing about the light dependent reaction all this kind of stuff it's an enzymes question it's warmer the enzyme catalyzed reactions more kinetic energy, more successful collisions, more enzyme substrate complexes. Job done, easy question, move on. But if you can't see that, and again, this takes practice, which is why you've got to finish your content early and then you can crack on of actually figuring out what the question is going on about. Okay, so that's the actual topic of the question. What could you do if you don't use the right words on the exam? What's some other suggested action hours? This is gonna be really useful to you guys if you can brainstorm some other good ones. I'll give you some here. Key term, blurts. Did this in my spiral life class the other day. So if you want to watch the spiral life class, we picked a topic, just splurge all the relevant key terms. And they are the words that are going to get you the marks. In my videos, they all go in red. They're the ones you need to know. So key term blurts. You could use the template notes. We've put in a line down the side that you can fold over and use them as a flashcard for all those key terms for testing yourself, active recall. Um, R in carbs is for reviewing the key terms. So basically you could do a whole session, just bullet, answer a paper only using key terms, only key terms, nothing else, key terms in a sensible order and see how well you match them up to the mark scheme. Super quick, super quick exercise, really effective. Um, basically that's the B of carbs as well, the bullet pointed key terms, as well as self-check. Write your answers. The self-check phase, the easiest ways to pick up marks in reviewing your answers is how many extra key terms can I add? Don't think, have I done it right? Have I done it wrong? Calculations, you can do that for. Graph analyses, you can do that for. But if you've misunderstood the question the first time around, unless you've got heaps of time to go back and really unpick the question, you're going to, like if you misread a word, you when you come back to it, you're going to misread it again. Like you just misread it every single time. So trying to break that 
is very difficult. What you can do to hijack the system is like, what's relevant in terms of the key terms here? How can I squeeze in and sandwich in some more key terms to get me those marks? Um, okay, and skills. Well, how can you improve your skills, the final category? So this is pretty broad. Maybe it's a command word you really struggle with. So just find a list, go spend one action hour making a list of all those evaluate questions and then just do evaluate questions for 45 minutes or suggest questions or calculate questions or whatever your weakness might be. You could use the exam guide. I'm just looking at my list here. Um, yeah, you can basically all those skills topics. So the colorimetry, maybe that's your weakness. Okay, you can go and check the exam guide. It's all sorted questions by topic, all new spec, all totally relevant to you. Um, evaluate or just pick a pick a key term and search through a past paper. Download the digital PDF. Maybe it's the evaluation of a conclusion. This scientist concluded that from these data. Do you agree? Yes or no? And why? Well, search for the word conclude. Then it gets concluded, conclusion, all that. And then you just do all of those ones, spend 45 minutes doing a question type. Students get so obsessed by a topic and it's not always the topics that are tripping you up. And that's what we're, um, what we're trying to teach you here. Okay, so there's some suggested ideas for biology. I'm all over the show right now. Okay, so let me show you a little bit more. And I'll, I'll take some questions in a second as well because I have been going a million miles an hour. Um, so that are the action hours. They're your improvement stage. Remember, on, on the ladder, they are the things that are going to make you get better. Then step four. It's a four-step process. You do the paper is number one. You mark and analyze it is number two. You do your action hours to improve your stuff is number three. And then you basically are going to see if you hit your target. What's your target? What's your target? If your target grade is X, what's your threshold for moving on to the next level. Exactly one grade above what you want to get at the end of the day. OK, so next in here, I'm going to go back to doing the paper. There's some if you look at one of these topics from the paper, and you, these are all the topics that are covered in the exam paper. So if you, if you know that you're just, you're just going to flunk because you haven't done it, you're just like, oh, you know that you're really terrible at serial dilution, then you can use this to do some optional preparation work. Again, action hour, 45 minutes working, 15 minute breaks. You can watch the tutorials, use the template notes. So let's say I'm going to just choose colorimetry and calibration curve. Why not? So you're going to load the video up. You're going to have the lesson. You're going to have the template notes. So this is going to show you, it's going to be an outline of everything that you need to know. It's going to just mean that you don't have to pay quite. So it's just a skeleton of all the notes on the page. So if we look at the lesson here, and I skip to the end of the lesson, don't, I'd highly recommend watching and listening, adding any additional notes, but we can see the subtitles here. And then we've got the notes template. It's going to make your notes nice and tidy to save a bit of cognitive load when you're writing those notes. And once you've done it, you can update the traffic light system. And this traffic light system is a little mood indicator. How well, how confident are you feeling about this? So, and the really nice thing, and I really highly recommend using this. If you're not, if you're not, not sure on it, go red. If you have watched it and you're not in you like in the middle, go amber. If you're pretty confident, go green. And the great thing about this is your course overview page, which will summarize all of these dots, all of your traffic lights on one page. So you can see where your problem topics are. And in like the content guide, for example, you've got all the videos. I don't know how many videos are in the content guide, loads of them broken down by topic. You can start to see your problem topics by the course overview page, which is super duper, super useful. OK, so you can use these for your action hours. And you've also got when you're marking your paper, step uh, step four is mark and analyze. In fact, two and four is mark and analyze. You've got the exam guide tutorials. 
So I haven't given you the mark scheme. You're going to be marking them using the video. So for each of these, you've got each question, you're going to watch me analyze the question. So if you're really stuck on that question, question one, you can watch this video, you can watch me read it, you can watch me analyze it, you can say, oh, you need to be a bit careful here because this is given per 15 minutes and this is given per hour, so there's a transformation. I'm not going to give you the answers, but I'm going to show you my mindset when I'm looking at that question in an exam situation, what I'm thinking. Then I answer it here, this is the least, and do not watch these until you've done it yourself. You are doing this on your own first. If you do do that, you just it simply it's not effective. It's just not effective. And then the final one is the masking video, which will show you how to mark it, what I've marked, how I gave myself the marks, whether it's worthy of a mark or not worthy of a mark. OK, so. Any general questions right now? I think that's probably the easiest thing for me to jump into. Have I lost anyone along the way? So what? What do you want to know about the TT method? I also would like to check in with you guys once you've done this a little bit. Who would be up for doing another, another YouTube live after Christmas to catch up once you've done your progress chart? You can share your progress charts with me and we can all see what progress we've made. Would you like to have a follow-up session in the new year before, maybe before your mocks, maybe early Jan? I'm sure I can find a time. It would probably have to be, uh, probably have to be at this kind of time of the day on the, probably the same time, same slot. 100% you can use this if you're in year 13. Yeah, you would just use an A-level paper. Okay, so I will come and do a session with you guys live again. Your deal is you've got to give this a go. You've got to follow the method. You've got to, you've got not cheat. You can't just skip ahead to an, if you, if you get one mark, 1% 1 under your threshold, you repeat the paper. It's not, I'm nearly there, nearly got that 55%. I'll move on now. What I'm going to do is you've got to go back and do it again. So you've got to play by the rules and you've got to fill in your progress chart because I want to see your progress chart. I want to see what it actually looked like. How many times do you have to do the same paper before you hit that threshold? And if, if you're doing the same paper five times, hate to break it to you, but maybe your target grade is a little bit too optimistic. If you're, you know, if you're currently at a D and you've done the paper five times in a row, trying to remember the mark scheme, trying to do all these action hours to improve those problem topics. If you can't get that threshold after five or six repeats, it's going to be a challenge. It's maybe not impossible, but it's going to be, it's going to be, it'll give you some idea of where you're at as well. You can mix this up. The minimum 24 hours gap between doing the paper once and then repeating the paper after your action hours but you can leave it a week between them if you want to. That's totally fine. Okay, they want the link. Okay, uh, let me do that. I'm gonna send you, and everyone who's got a subscription, everyone who's got a subscription, I'm just gonna add it to your bundle. So you don't really have to worry too much. I will, this is all public, so um, you will be able to, um, you will be able to view it it's going in the chat right there. Okay, there it is. And I'm going to show you one more thing before you all get too stuck into that is that if you do want to ask me questions, if you're not one of our subscribers, I'm just going to talk you through the process of how you do this. Basically, I guess I'm going to have to do it like this, just share my entire desktop. Okay, so from the course, basically every button has got enroll free to ask questions. So if you're not one of our, you have to be logged in to ask a question. It doesn't know where to post it from. You simply, there's no other way of doing it. I'm going to open this. So this big button here in an incognito tab. So it will take you to the page where you sign up to enroll in the course name, email, create your password, um, tick the boxes and you're good to go. 
and that's all you need to do. And then you can log into that course. You can log into the academy. You'll be able to get access to that course. Won't be forever. We're going. This will be free until your mocks end. Maybe the end of Jan. Maybe the end of Feb. Whatever. Um, but that is how you sign in and ask me questions. Do use the traffic light system because it will save your bacon at the end of the year. Um, so good. Okay. So, any biology questions? In fact, let's recap. What's step one? What's step one? How much were you paying attention? Hasper, you're pretty much there. We're going to go through it step by step, though. Do the exam. What are the rules for doing the exam? What are the what are the restrictions? No music. Test conditions. Tidy space would be ideal. Just imagine you're in the real exam. Finish the paper, set a timer, and just do it. It's it. Actually, when you're doing it and you've got full focus, it's actually way better than doing a paper half assed Instagram open, computer open, pinging away at you, time drags, right? If you're in it and you've got focus, it will actually zip by much quicker. Okay, so then what's the next step after you've done the exam? Take a break, first of all. I won't include taking a break, but it is important to take a break at that point. What's next? Negatively mark it and complete what? Coconut's got a massive black spot on it. Look at it. That's probably where I bet that's what happened there. Marks for 10. The MID sheet, marks I dropped, categorize, sort, and fill in the marks I dropped sheet. Analyze it. Where are you weak? That's what you want to know. Okay, so that's the mark in the analysis. That's step two. What's step three? That is where it fell off the tree and landed. Is that great big bruise there? Action hours. What's the maximum number of action hours you can do? Three action hours. The rules for action hours are you have to write down what you're going to do. You have to write down what you're going to do. This is the one I actually didn't show you. This is one of our action hour cards. You can print these off. These are so great because when you know that you've got a weakness, you can fill as many of these hours as you want. You can just have a stack of them on your desk so that when you come to revise, you just pick up one of those cards and you just do that. You don't have to think, what do I do? Because you've already previous you has told future you, this is where you're weak. Do this one thing. So you're going to write your subject. This is biology. I am going to, and you have to write it down. Thinking it does not count. It's got to be a clear, actionable task. It must be very clear, otherwise you will drift. When I've got loads of work to do, I use this and it's gold. You are going to set up a good study environment. You've done that in phase one already. You've put your phone on airplane mode, ideally out of the way, but you are, you've set up a good, have you got your calculator? Have you got everything you need? So you don't have to go and get water or these things to break your concentration. And you're gonna do 45 minutes, full focus on this thing. I am going to watch three content guide tutorials and write notes plus update the traffic light system. That's it. Probably gonna take you about 20 minutes or 10, 30 minutes to watch a video and take notes. So that's probably fair. And then afterwards in review, how effective was it? Or maybe you did it and it wasn't very effective at all. In which case you can learn that activity, not very useful. Maybe you did it and you would think, oh, wow, I actually came away with loads from that. And then what advice from future me? Don't snack. Yeah, or whatever, whatever your what what caused you to go wrong? Did you fall off the wagon and why? But you must write it down because if you don't, you will you will drift. You will end up off topic 
I have done it enough times to know from personal experience. Okay. So step three is action hours. Step four, what's the fourth step? So you don't get the questions, Ruham, when you've got to do some work on your question analysis. Question analysis where you want to go. Rephrase the question. Do a whole paper of that. Do the actual drop of the question. Do a whole paper of that. Do like get one area of your content knowledge super tight so that you know none of the content is an issue. And then find questions where you where you where you on those topics. So that you know content knowledge is an issue and you can really focus on the skills and understanding the question and how the question gets to be what it is. Okay. Step four, redo the paper and do the marks. I dropped sheet, the analysis again, and then you have you hit your target grade. What is your target for moving on to the next paper? What's your target grade for moving before you move on to the next paper? I'll keep pinging the link in there so you can still use it. We'll put the link in the description when you're watching the recording. What, yeah, what, but in terms of my target grade for moving on to the next paper, what do I mean by that target grade or that target? Above the threshold, but what is the threshold? Yeah, one above what you want to get at the end. If so, if your end of target, end of year A level target is a C, then you need to get a B to move on. If you want to get a B, then you need to get an A in order to move on. If you want to get an A, you need to get an A star in order to move on to the next paper. If you want to get an A star, then seven to ten percent above the A star threshold. And again, I've given you the numbers, approximate numbers on your progress chart. So it's all there. You don't have to remember any of this. Um, Luca. Luca, Luca. For biology, focusing on one topic for a day instead of just jumping between topics. This is the method that I would like you to try, even if it's just for one paper. It's quite a lot of work, one paper, because you're going to do the exam an hour, the one I've given you. Then you mark it and analyze it, probably 45 minutes. Then you're going to do three action hours. That's three hours on top of that. Then you'll do the paper again and mark and analyze it. So that is at least a six hour cycle. So that's quite a lot of work. That's a solid, solid, you know, it's a couple of hours a day. But just that, what you've said there, just do a topic and learn it and then do another 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 topic and learn it and do another topic and learn it before you know it's may and you've got no skills and you're quite good in quite some areas but you can't link any of them together you can't do any of the application questions you can't do any of the math questions you can't do any of the graph questions you can't do any of the suggest questions it's like this is going to tell you maybe you're revising topics that you already are quite good at you could be better but you're quite good at so What's the way, what should you be doing? The things you don't know. How do you know what you don't know? You do it by testing yourself, creating a list of the things you don't know and working on them. That way you are testing yourself across topic, across skill, across command word. It is the most effective way of learning. I don't mean to, I, I didn't mean to pick on you there, but that, that is the summary of the classic mindset that we're trying to break. We're trying to smash that paradigm of just do topic, just do topic, just do topic. Forget it. Use the past papers to structure your revision. You will improve way faster. And I want, okay, I'm going to do another session with you guys. I'll do another session with you. The deal is you use the method as best you can. You fill in your progress chart and you share your progress charts with me in January. You might have only done a, a couple of papers by then. That's totally okay. I want to see what they look like. TC, TT subscribers, are you down for that? Will you, will you share that with me? Ruhab, in the course, there's a full page on every single step. There's a bunch of videos on what is an action hour, suggested action hour activities, the action hour cards. Everything is inside the course. So you will get, you can read it. You can watch the videos. Basically, everything's in video form. It's in text form. You can do it in whichever form you want. Okay, so I'm going to hold you all that. Sabrina, Hadia, IDK, Rama, Sully, Nikita. Like, complete your progress chart. Like, I've got no motivation here other than to help you as best I can. Like, I will, and feel free to, you can tell your classmates 
or you can keep it a secret from them and you can start outperforming them and see and they'll be like how are you suddenly getting b's because you've been getting d's all year and you'll be like tt method it's the secret um okay any questions any questions on life the universe and everything The other thing, I'll just show you the buttons, the other buttons. I didn't really go in. There was so much. I was like way off topic today. I was like in Lulu, la la land. I was so I had a coffee just before and I was like jazzed up. <laughs> OK, so buttons inside the course. You've got the course overview that will take you to this page. Oh, no, it won't. It'll take you to the page when I click on it. Um, you've got the downloads will take you to uh, the page where you can download all of the documents, the TT method documents. So we can use that. So using these on a mobile little little point here on a mobile, this side menu is you've got a tap down to find it. The side menu has gone on a mobile. So just have a play around if you are on a mobile. It's all fully optimized for mobile site, but you can find this. It just takes a bit tricky. Uh, to playing around with it, but you can use the buttons to navigate around. That's why we've added them to the course. This is where you can download the test paper, the marks I drop sheet, the action hour cards, the progress chart, and the study planner, which I haven't even mentioned yet, but um, maybe we'll do that in January. Okay, and then if you're not a subscriber, you can come here and try our content guide. In fact, I'm going to open this in incognito as well because it is. In fact, I don't know which what screen share I put on, to be perfectly honest. If I'm not sharing that window, you're not going to see it. So. So in the content guide, if you're not one of our subscribers, you can try it out with those buttons at the top there. You'll see these unlocked padlocks that tells you where there's free content. There's a bunch of free stuff in here. Obviously, it's going to look kind of scary because um, there's a lot. This is the entire A level biology. This is all of my lessons, everything, 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 everything. The gray ones are ones I've completed. Um, okay, so in fact, no, the, in fact, the gray ones are the, the black ones are Tom and like our coder has done some work overnight. The gray ones here, the black ones are the ones you can access. So you can view these ones here, these ones that are not grayed out. These are the ones that you can try for free. So you can see an example AS recording from my live class. All our live classes are recorded. You can see, you can view these ones. If, if, if it's grayed out, you can't see it's hidden from you because you just need a subscription to get the full course, obviously. But you can see how much free content there is in here. There's loads and loads and loads of it. You can just basically get an idea of whether the learning system works for you. If you like it, start a subscription. If you don't, no dramas, no problem at all. The exam guide, you've got example videos from both of them. Um, and yeah, you can try the exam guide again. It's got every single question from all the new spec papers. We've just added all the AS papers or they're being in the process of added, being added to the course. So there's, yeah, there's basically loads and loads and loads of stuff in there. Everything you might possibly need as an A-level student. Um, okay. I'd missed any questions. I'm sorry, because I was screen sharing. Ronnie can talk you through this. Ronnie is, yeah, Ronnie is doing her live session in 40 minutes. I'm actually going to shut up and pack out, I think, of here, um, because Ronnie is doing her session for A-level mathematicians. She's going to be showing you how to apply the TT method to maths, because it is a bit different for math. There's different documents in that course. The, um, the, the marks I drop sheet was, this is actually one of Ronnie's inventions that we've refined and refined. Oh, she's been using it for years. Um, yeah, it's going to be really, really good. Basically, it's maths is different. Maths is skills based, right? Not knowledge based. Biology, content, knowledge, and obviously lots of skills as well. But maths is skills based. And so she's going to be going through some different things with you, the different documents and why this applies, how to tweak it for maths. OK, I don't see any questions. Did I miss any questions? If, if I did repost it to me. Do I provide the exam questions, Precious? Yeah, there's a there's a test paper in there. It's, it's AS topics. Obviously, you can apply this method to any other exam that you want to. Yeah, I'm totally sorry. I just ran out of time. I was like totally off the mat. I was just bouncing off the walls. I was just yabbering at you. OK, before I go, give me score out of 10 for usefulness. Oh, she's coming in. She's behind the curtain. What? Careful, you might not be able to get through that gap. It's pretty tiny. All right, you probably need, yeah. 
Well, I'm just saying hello. For, I was talking to you all from in there and now <laughs> I've come in here. But the reason I've come in is that um, Rich didn't get time to talk about the study planner much. And I think it's really going to help you with like balancing your three different subjects and dealing with even within that the priorities and stuff. So what I'll do in my session at 12 is to start with the study planner. So you will all have this course by then. So you can have a look at it and yeah, print I'll... it off. And then I'll start with that. So even if you're not doing maths, come along at 12 and I'll start with the study planner. Yeah. Well, okay. Sweet. Yeah. I, I'll enroll every all our sub, current subscribers in it. Obviously, you can view it for free, but you'll just have it on your My Courses page as of 20 minutes from now. It'll take me a little bit of time because we've got so many different courses. But um, this, we rehab. You'll find out in 40 minutes. Be back here on YouTube Live. It's a different link. It's a different page. Um, yeah. Okay. Awesome. You're saying it's useful. I think we're done. There's no need. I will be back. We'll let you know the dates. Check. I mean, follow the YouTube channel, hit the bell, because then you get notifications when we're doing lives like this. Um, try it. It's all my challenge to you over the Christmas holidays. Don't do topic based notes out the textbook revision. Use this instead. You don't have to use our courses for this. You can use whatever methods you want. But I mean, the courses are just going to save you time and teach it to you as effectively or as quickly as they can, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I'll be on the chat during Ronnie's live. So if there are any other final questions, although I really want to keep the maths chat to maths, and, but I'll be there if you do have any other questions. Okay. I think that's it for now. We'll see you if you want to come back for the study panel, which I'd really recommend. I, I just didn't run out of time. Play around with it. All the documents are in there. You can have a look at it, but how to use it. Again, you're just going to waste no time because you're going to know what you need to do. And when you sit down, you're going to end the action hours, use a timer, write it down in advance and give it 100 percent focus with no distractions. And you will you will double your productivity. I promise. I promise. On that note, on a double productivity promise, see you in January for a follow up. Fill in your progress charts. I want to know what they look like.